Hello and welcome to the tutorial about using Easy to Boot. Here are some of the topics I'm going to cover uh, in this video. Um, I'll assume that you know how to make an Easy to Boot drive. I'll talk about a helper flash drive for a bit and the folder structure of Easy to Boot. And then I'll cover these uh, other topics here about how to add ISOs, how to configure the menu, change the background, etc. Um, alter the behavior, add passwords, add blank lines, use fast load to increase the speed of loading the main menu, etc. etc. So first I'll talk about uh, what flash drive to use. So Easy to Boot works best on a single removable USB flash drive. But Easy to Boot will also work on a fixed disk type of USB flash drive or a USB hard disk. But if you're booting uh, from Windows Vista, Windows 7 or Windows 8 install ISOs or Server 2012 etc. or some WinPE ISOs based on Vista or later um, versions of Windows then you will also need a USB helper flash drive which must be of the removable type. So RM Prep USB will tell you what type it is in the brackets here it says removable so you can see that this uh, Corsair Voyager GT USB drive that I've got is of the removable type and you don't need a helper drive. If it's not of the removable type then say you've got a USB hard disk for instance with the easy to boot on it and all your ISOs you'll also need this helper file which you can make um, simply by copying over a few folders from easy to boot onto um, a FAT32 or NTFS formatted um, USB flash drive of the removable type and you can use this um, flash drive for other things. You can keep your files or photos on it as you would normally. It just needs these extra few files on it at the same time. Um, if you don't uh, have this helper drive and you are using a fixed disk type of USB drive for easy to boot um, then you won't get this blue console window when you boot a Windows install ISO, Windows Vista or 7 or 8 install ISO. It, it, it's ok with XP, XP is not a problem, but uh, for Vista or later ISOs um, you need this blue console window to run and to load the ISO up as a virtual drive um, so you need this helper drive to assist you with that and all you do is look for the ISO folder and then the docs folder and the USB flash drive helper files folder and you simply copy all of these files over to your removable USB flash drive and that's now your E2B helper flash drive which you need to plug in at the same time as you plug in your easy to boot USB hard disk. So let's just look at the folder structure of easy to boot now. easy to boot will only detect payload files that are in the folders at the ISO XXX level. So this second level down. Um, if you put uh, drop an ISO file in there or an image file or a VHD or um, an IMA file um, Easy to boot will auto detect those files and put them in the menu automatically. Easy to boot will also detect special files called .mnu or menu files. And if they can be in any folder at this second level or in any subfolder underneath that level. So just to demonstrate that, um, I've got a PMagic ISO here in this ISO main menu level and this will be automatically listed by Easy to boot and this entry will be put into the main menu, the first menu, when you boot. If however I copied this ISO file, if I, if I moved it and put it into the MNU folder here, then um, it would not be listed automatically in the menu uh, because um, it's only this, this level that um, payload files are enumerated on. And lastly, if we look at this uh, root folder here, um, you can put uh, your own files in here, so you could, you could create a folder, for instance, called, um, you know, Steve's folder, or whatever you like. Um, and you can put your photographs, etc., in here, and it won't interfere with Easy to Boot at all. And just to remind you, before you um, run Easy to Boot, you need to make all the files on the drive contiguous using Control F2. Just say yes. And of course they're all contiguous because we just made the, the uh, drive freshly anyway. 
So now let's test it with um, QEMU. So just click on the QEMU button. Uh, we can create a virtual hard disk. For this, for these purposes, we don't need to. So we can just say zero for no hard disk, and this is the amount of memory to use. Um, anything uh, around a, a gigabyte is fine. So eight eight six is fine. Eight eight five. And QEMU will load the font file, and then it'll show us the menu. Here it lists all our menu files and payload files that we have. And finally we get the Easter Boot menu. And you can see that uh, we've got three sub-menu enders here. We've got the backup uh, sub-menu, we've got the DOS sub-menu, and we've got the utilities sub-menu. And that's because these are actually had files in them. The other files, antivirus, folder, etc., are not listed because they were empty. So let's just add our own ISO. So the easiest thing to do is to put your ISOs in the main menu folder. So I'll just copy over into here a partition logic ISO. And just for demonstration purposes, let's put um, a one in there. Linux folder, for instance, which is empty at the moment. So if I copy something into there, so I've now got Android in the Linux folder. And the thing I haven't mentioned so far is the auto folder. Now, the auto folder, you can put all your payload files in, but it's slightly different in that it doesn't, uh, you don't put any menu files in this folder, and you can have any subfolders in this folder. So if I create a new folder, and I'll call it Fred, doesn't really matter what it is. And I'll paste an ISO into here. Now even though this is in the, um, a subfolder called Fred, um, it'll still be listed by in the auto menu um, in order. So you don't you can you can have you can make up any folders you want, any folder structure you like under auto. And as long as they're payload files, ISO files, or IMA files, or image files, or whatever, they'll all be listed all together. So let's see what that looks like. So see we've got uh, PMagic listed here, which I can choose to run if I want to. Um, and we should also have got a list menu now. And in the next menu is our Android ISO. So if I go back to the main menu with the F8. And you can see that we've also got the direct boot menu, which is our auto folder. And in here, it will list our other ISO. And even though it was in a subfolder, it's listed. Let's just go back to the main menu. Now you'll see we've got a um, backup menu here, and we've got a DOS menu, and we've got a utilities menu. So if you don't want those menus, just delete their contents like this. So let's just delete that file. There's the DOS folder. And there's a menu folder in there, and there's a, some, a menu file and a payload file, which is a, an IMA file, a floppy image file. So uh, if we don't want those, delete the whole folder. Don't leave the folder in there, otherwise it'll, it'll still be listed. So let's delete those. And there's utilities folder. And again, if you don't want these, you can just delete them. Now let's see what that looks like when we boot. And there we are. You see that now we've only got the direct menu here. With our port is fine in it. Or if we go back to the main menu again, we've got our Linux menu. But the other uh, menus have gone the utilities menu, the DOS menu, and the backup menu. They've all gone because we've deleted. The, fold, the contents of the folders, so then the folders are now empty. 
So this is our main menu folder, and I'm going to add another ISO into this folder, which is a uh, Ultimate Boot CD ISO. And if I sort this folder alphabetically, you'll see that the P Magic ISO is going to be listed first, followed by the Ultimate Boot CD ISO, because everything is alphabetical in the menu. And then we'll have an antivirus menu subfolder listed, and then the auto or direct one will be listed if, if there's any files in there. So if we want to change the order, so for instance, if we want to have the Ultimate Boot CD ISO listed first, let's simply change that. So if I put that to $A, like that, you see it's now sorted alphabetically, it'll come first in the menu. So let's have a look at that. And so here we are, you can see that we've now changed the order so that that ISO is first and the partition magic ISO is second. But this doesn't look very pretty to have $A there and uh, in fact just having the ISO itself doesn't look very good either. So uh, we can actually change the uh, how that appears in the menu by using a .txt file. So let's create a text file in this folder and the text file must be the same name as the payload file. Start with the word title, we then leave a space and now we have the text that we want to appear in the menu followed by slash n uh, it's best to leave a space there, it just looks neater to have a space. And then uh, any help text that we need. And I'll show you what this looks like in the menu now. So here are two files, .iso and .text. And here we are, you can see that we've got the ultimate boot CD listed now in the menu. Uh, and there's the help text underneath the menu. And you can do this for all the uh, payload files that you put on, just create a .txt file.